name of Jesus. I want to welcome us once again into the presence of the Lord. The Lord has blessed you today, that brought you today. He knows the reason why He has brought you. And I know that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Please let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. The theme that we have been given of the Lord and we are focusing on this week or this month is the righteous, sorry, the just shall live by his faith. You find that in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. I'll read quickly from verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you will put on is not the life more than meat, or is not life, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the earth, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into bands. Yet your every father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thoughts, can add one cubit unto his stature? Let's jump to verse 31. And therefore, sorry, let's jump to verse 30. Wherefore, he God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I want to underline little faith. Therefore, take no thought, say, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where with that shall we be clothed? For after these things, to the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first. Church, let's read verse 3 together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, this is our test for today. I will speak around this test. And I believe that the Lord Himself will reach out unto us. Amen. If you have the kind of Bible that I have, it is written in red, which means it's a direct statement from the mouth of Jesus Christ. And Jesus explained faith in a more explicit a broader dimension and perspective. He explained faith the way most of us understood it. We thought faith is only meant for getting things. When I need a job, I put my faith on the line and it is delivered. When I need promotion, when I am sick, when I need divine intervention, we have been taught by preachers, we have been taught by men of God that faith, you get what you need. I don't understand what I'm speaking about. Jesus addressed that in this scripture. That's when he was talking about to be clothed and your food and raiment and everything. But he spoke that this is the elementary level of faith. Because this level of faith is what even Gentiles, people that are not in the church, seek after. Every time they apply their faith, even without knowing it, when they put themselves in life, for example, you find a Muslim making sacrifice because he needed something. Praise the Lord. 
And you will find in the word of the Lord that seed time and harvest will not cease. So because even unknowing to him, he puts himself in line with the law of faith. Faith delivers for them. Even Gentiles. But he said there is a higher level of faith with which the people of God should live. Praise the Lord. We looked at the first one last week and that is when you come into faith, you are justified. Mm. And we said that to be justified you need to be discharged and acquitted or acquitted. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same way some words are difficult for you to pronounce, some words are difficult for pastor to pronounce. <laughs> to be discharged and acquitted. Is that the right way now? Ah, okay. I will try the third time. <laughs> Which means everything that pertains for you to live the life of a child of God has been provided for. And therefore, if there's anything that is contrary to the well-being or your welfare, God has made provision for it. For you to walk and to live by the faith and reality that God has released it is what makes it to produce in your life. But Jesus now spoke in this Matthew chapter 6 that the higher dimension of seeking God for things by faith is for you to live what he said in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So the second thing that the world just, because our thing says that the just shall live by his faith. The world just needs to be discharged and acquitted or to be released. The second thing that it needs justified is to be righteous. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. There is an element of faith to get things. And the person that gets things that way, we keep seeking after things. But there is an element of faith pleasing God and God adds things to you. Jesus calls it the word of righteousness in the kingdom. Where your faith is not only for getting things, but your faith also is for pleasing God. You are at a different realm in your work with God altogether. Now for time, we will not be able to read some scriptures. But if you look at the word righteous, it was explained in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 2, 3 and 4. And for those that were around on Tuesday, please, the book that we are studying as a church is the book of Romans. Now you will discover two categories of righteousness. There is the imputed righteousness. I love the way NIV call it credited righteousness. Praise the Lord. Now I need to give us that so that we just pick it up from there. When a, someone comes to Christ, and I think we touch on that very well on Sunday, you are justified. He said, be justified by faith. We have peace with God. 
So when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that act of faith, which is expressed by your confession, makes you or earns you a justification which we call salvation. And as a result, the person becomes a child of God. God bless you. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. And because of that step that you take, God imputes righteousness for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, some of us, we are, we are familiar with some bands. They will say, come and open an account with us. We, we open the account for you with an amount. That is what imputed righteousness means. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's find out. I like the way NIV puts it. And I want to read that to us before we go further. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your faith we move to the next level this month in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Not only will your faith begin to answer in ephemeral things, we begin to answer for you in spiritual things in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm looking for my own note. Lord will help me today. Amen. Praise the Lord. to be walked upon by you and has to 
become something that is used by you to live your Christian life. Praise the Lord. And that second class of righteousness is what I call the strive for righteousness. In Matthew chapter 5 and 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So after God imputed righteousness into you, you have the responsibility to remain righteous. You have the responsibility to be righteous. And that will come by a hunger and a task after righteousness. Without which faith becomes children. What am I trying to say this morning? Many of us, we are putting the weapon of faith to use because faith is a weapon. And faith is a strong weapon in the universe. Without faith, there is no body that can become anything in God, that can be sustained in anything with God. But faith with unrighteousness will not work. The just shall live by his faith. The faith of the just is the faith that lives. The faith of the just is the faith that works. The faith of the just is the faith that produces results. Maybe you have been praying concerning an issue. Maybe you have spoken. He said last week we said begin to call the things that be not as though they were. And you have done all that you have been told to do. You have fasted. You have applied your faith. You have applied the word of God. I believe as the Lord is exposing it to all that one thing that is missing is to check your stand with God. Righteousness, number one, means having the right stand with God. When you are not standing right with God, your faith cannot work. Hallelujah. Now you remember the story of our father in the faith called Abraham. When God called him, his faith was working for him. But the time came in the life of Abraham. The Bible said because he suffered, he decided to go down to Egypt. And because where God does not send you, you will need to sustain yourself. Abraham, a man, a righteous man, became a liar. Praise the Lord. And because he stepped from righteousness to unrighteousness, everything began to crumble. But because God is a great God, immediately he corrected and retraced his steps. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. If you can retrace your steps in righteousness, if you can retrace your step in righteousness, your faith will begin to work wonders. Yeah. I thought I would hear a better yeah. Yeah. Now that's the Abraham, let's take Gehazi. Hallelujah. Yeah. Gehazi was in the company of men of faith. You read the second Kings chapter 2. You read first about Elijah. Elijah, a man of faith, when the Lord was going to take him up, he got to a water, the water called Jordan. He took the mantle and splashed it on the mantle of the water and the water parted. The Bible recorded that after Elijah was gone, when Elijah was coming back, the same thing that his master did, he used the same mantle and he parted the river. 
But let us look at the story of Gehazi. Praise the Lord. My prayer for you is that faith will begin to answer your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said faith will begin to answer for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Kings chapter 4. If you want to check the one I just said now because of time concerning Elijah and Elisha using the mind to and in both words in the hand of Elijah and work the hand of Elisha. Check that out in 2 Kings chapter 4. Sorry, 2 Kings chapter 2. But concerning Gehazi, let's look at 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 29. Then said to Gehazi, that is Elisha speaking, Guard up thy noise and take my staff in your hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as the soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. The weapon that was in the hand of Elijah. What in the hand of Elisha was put in the hand of Gehazi, but no work. Do you know why? Gehazi was not after seeking the kingdom of God, he was after seeking gain for himself. You remember concerning the leper man, Neman? This is the reason. Faith does not work. Notwithstanding, you need to write that down. Faith does not work. Notwithstanding, faith works by a righteous work, a right standing with God. Now I stand before God. I don't know what you want to teach in Sunday school. But I was just sitting there with my mouth open, seeing that you were talking about holiness. The Bible says, once are thus spoken, twice we should hear. But today is a special day because God is speaking to us twice. You need to hear 50 million times. If you align yourself with righteousness, there is nothing you are looking for that you will not get. The faith that moves mountain is not any half faith. It is the faith by righteousness. Now I was shocked when I discovered in the all mark of faith that something was mentioned. I think that's verse 36 of Hebrews chapter 11. But it was mentioned from the perspective of that it was created to be among those names that were listed. But unrighteousness taught him halfway. When you are saved, what you need to run the race is put in your hands. But you need to do your own part so that when you decree a thing, it is established. The Bible says, when you have faith, as long as a mustard seed, you shall say, Oh, don't this matter. It's taking us too long. If you have faith, people that have studied about mustard seed said it's a very tiny seed. But the Bible says, when as a child of God we have faith, as small as the smallest seed in the universe, which means you don't need big faith, but you need the right faith. And the right faith is the faith of the righteous man. The right faith is the faith of the righteous man. You cannot be living the way you lie and expect God to move on your favor or your, or your behalf. You cannot. Your faith must be based on righteousness. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there are some things that have just decided 
started not to move. In fact, things have been stagnated. Things are like Abraham going down around you. You have fasted, you have prayed. The Lord is pointing your eyes to say they just live by faith. They just live by faith. And living by faith is not doing every other gymnastics without minding the way you live. Maybe I say you will understand. When you mind the way you live, your faith will begin to work. When you mind the way you live, your faith will begin to work. You know, I found something this morning in Hebrews chapter 7. You should know that it's about that. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1. Let's learn something there and I hope this week put us on our feet and say, come what to me. I'm going to live the life of righteousness. The Bible says, for this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham Jesus, he read that chapter 7 and read it up to 7. Jesus himself collects it from your mind. Listen to the revelation that, that I believe the Lord is showing us. And the Bible is saying that the king that collects it, which is our king Christ, is the king of what? Is the king of righteousness. When you do financial shadiness and you bring your tithes, you have only come to report yourself to God. So some people are in church, listen to where it applies to us now. You are paying your tithe, you are paying your offering, but financially things are choked up. It is because you are not following the path of righteousness. You are obeying the law of faith of bringing your tithe, but you are not obeying the faith of living right. So your action is not bringing forth fruits. Of the blessing that you bring. Did you see what he said in verse 1 and 2? He said, He blessed him. You don't need to cut corners to make it. For the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. Don't cheat people to make money and bring it out. Praise the Lord. You know, in the UK, churches are not only a church, they are also registered charity. When you bring such tithes, what you brought is a donation to a charity. You have not brought tithes to God. You know, there is a difference between tithes and donation. Everyone that is not living right and is praying in tongues, I move to number two example. You know, the Bible says, in James, he said, in Jude, he said, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And you are just living your life the way you like during the week. And you come by blasting in the Holy Ghost and commanding all the devil and binding all the devil. By your tongue, what you are doing is you are reporting yourself to God. During the week, I stole. During the week, I lied. During the week, I did all manner of things. Lord, can't you see me? Praise the Lord. You are not building your faith. You are not building your faith. Our life must be the life of righteousness. If the faith subject that God is teaching us this month will work in our life. The just shall live by his faith. One of us was saying that what he got from that message, the just shall live by his faith, that is up to you. Now I stand to celebrate that word that it is up to you whether you want to live right or not. But faith answers in the life of those that live right. Can I say to you as a pastor, 
if living in the UK we make you to corrupt your destiny, go back home. For them that are predestinate, he called. Or those that he called, he predestinate in whichever way. Then those that he predestinate, he justified. And when he justified them, he glorified them. But by revelation, the Lord showed to us that for you to enter into your glory, it is faith that justified. Now, if you want to enter into your glory and you are not living right, you have corrupted faith. Faith will begin to work for you. Amen. So this week is the week of righteousness. It's the week for every man to search himself, search his house, search his wardrobe, search his briefcase, search everything. Did you see the story of, 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 of that prophet? What's his name now? That we read in Zechariah chapter 3. Joshua. The only thing that was persisting me is the few he can me. As long as there is a few garment, Satan has the permission to resist. Satan has the permission to resist. Satan has the permission to resist. On the same way God exposed the few garment upon Joshua, is exposing the few garment that is stopping your faith from moving mountain. And we are going to come here on Tuesday. We are going to make war in the spirit because living right is in warfare. Living right is in warfare. You want what is the name of Paul? Paul said, "What is this nature that I have? As I strive to live right, there is a law in my members. You can't do it by your effort. You can't do it by yourself. It has to be by the help of God." And that's what Tuesday is about. Whatever internal is that struggle that is saying that you will not be able to live, do you know something you can't live right in one week? Do you know something you can't live right in one day? Do you know something you can't live right in one month? Do you know that some people cannot do without lying in a day? It is a force sitting upon them because that force knows that as long as, as he's there, they cannot rise to fulfill their destiny. Now you, 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 should, you, should, you should believe God that it is Him that wants to do great and mighty things in our life, exposing to us the parallel of faith and righteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord King of glory Himself. We take away every, every few big garments in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible talking about Abel in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. He said, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was what? God will always separate the giver from the gift. That is what I was saying when I was explaining the times. Do you not get it closer now? Abel was standing. Cain was standing. They both brought, brought a gift. God accepted one. He did not accept the other. Did you see the reason? Abel was righteous. Abel was righteous. When you begin to buy faith, that is why you find in the scripture that every time a man is living a righteous life, God will account you to him as righteous. The imputed righteousness and the strife for righteousness. Let's look at first Timothy as we just ran on. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Let me just let me just jump on to Okay, let's read everything. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his.
Let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now he said in verse 21, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good works. Verse 22 is the emphasis. Flee also youthful love, but follow righteousness. After I follow righteousness, what is there? Praise the 
Lord. And the third one, which is the final one because of time, is in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus, they are again entangled entang therein and overcome. The later end is worse with death than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. The way of faith is the way of righteousness. So the third thing that righteousness means is to stay unpolluted. Find out in verse 20. If after they have escaped the pollution, when we gave our life to Christ, what we actually escaped was pollution. But if you read further down to like verse 22, it talks about a dog that is returned to his mommy. Many of us, the thing that God has cleansed us for, for whatever reason, the things that we eat, the things that we are looking for, we find ourselves going back into it. But I pray and I ask God that He will help us to stand in the place of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's rise on our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 29 says, Be filled with all unrighteousness. Romans 1, 29. Be filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, Maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, barbatas, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient of parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. Implacable or merciful, who would know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are not worthy? Sorry, are worthy of death, not only to the same, but have pleasure in death that do death. If it's possible for technical to put from as 29 to 32. If there's anyone that you can trace to your life, you are going to be calling the name of the saying, Lord, I have had your word this afternoon. Help me in the glory to be washed from this plague and begin to mention the name. This is a serious prayer. I tell you something. If you are deep and see and walk the work of righteousness before God, there is nothing you are looking for that will not give to you. Let us just begin to cry unto the Lord. Lord, I made my choice for righteousness. I made my choice for holiness. Every evil way that is in my life, every evil 